Hi, my name is Sally Hurst. I'm an artist living and working in the UK. And I've been using Stencil Girl stencils for many years. Uh, and particularly after I met Mary Beth way, way, way back. I'm thrilled that she's asked me to do the uh, guest artist this month. And so I've been playing with a whole range of her stencils using golden pastes and gels and inks and paints. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I've had a great time. So these are the ones I've got to play with. And I'm going to show you now what I do with them. I like to build lots of textures on my paintings uh, and using a range of absorbent pastes and gels. Uh, I'm going to use some golden fibre paste with this stencil on this piece of paper. I tend to work on paper because I then glue it onto panels. But I find if I'm working on paper, I'm not so precious. So I'm going to push it through. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge. I want to maintain that kind of organic feel to it. Uh, the fibre paste is absorbent. I'm doing this on watercolour paper. Peel it off. So I've laid it on as thick as I possibly can. Okay, to get this lovely thick texture. This is on the piece that has fibre paste on it and this one I'm going into with this lovely green gold. So I'm going to go in with a Nicolazzo. Again, I've got a little bit of paint on my brayer. I'm just going to pick up Again, if I've got it anywhere I don't want, I can just go in and wet it down. On the other side of this paper, I'm going to go in with the uh, more geometric design. And again, fibre paste. Uh, and on this one, I'm going to use Golden's Iridescent Bronze, which is looks like bronze, okay, 
but when you wet it down it does something very different slightly mucky brush but it won't really matter so I'm just going to wet the paper first and then I'm going in with the bronze again the fibre paste is absorbent the paper is absorbent but they have different absorbances and of course I have all the edges Just wait and see what happens to that. Okay, what's happened is the copper. What's happened is the paint has split. It's essentially made with coated mica flakes and patharo green and when you wet it down it splits so I've got this lovely mucky green paint mix a little bit of that quite nice orange from the mucky water okay that's going to give me a real grungy effect let that dry off This one I'm going to do on a slightly larger piece of paper uh, and I'm just going to run it across a section and I'm going to use light moulding paste golden light moulding paste on this one again it's absorbent the watercolour paper is absorbent and the paste is absorbent so I'm going to get two different absorbent textures. Again, trying to keep that quite thick. I'm using paper and I'm using paste and gels that are flexible. Not all the paste and gels you can buy are flexible. It needs to be if it's going on paper because I don't want it to crack. Okay. Oh, that is... That is delicious. That's it's like an embossing. Oh my! Wow. <laughs> I yeah. I want to try to marry it up without having too much of a gap and without squashing what's already there. I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm good to go. Yeah. Uh, this is the one that I did with a light moulding paste, which is an absorbent paste on an absorbent paper. But they're going to have different absorbances, so we're going to get some interesting things going on. Uh, I'm watering down some acrylic fluid paint Okay, which you can add as much water as you like to the fluid paints if you're going on an absorbent paper. So I'm using it like a watercolour. And what it's doing, as you can see, it's settling into 
it's settling into all the areas in and around the stencil okay this is uh, so I'm color wise I've got a transparent red and a quinacridone nicolazzo gold and I'm just kind of using them re really laying on as much paint and as much water as I want to And give me some delicious. I'm going to go. This is a going to be a larger piece of a panel, so I'm going to just keep splashing this paint in, letting it flood. I'll probably do two or three layers on this, but you get the idea. Here is the one with the light moulding paste that I flooded over the watercolour with watercolour. Uh, I'm going to now use some golden open burnt umber and a brayer or a roller as we call them, this side of the pond. And I'm going to just lightly skim across That's created some texture. If there's anything I don't like, or an area that I feel is not working, I'm going to go back in and just wet down that open. So there, for example, I love this bit here. Not happy with that one. This one, not too happy with. And another one over here. So now I'm using the golden open like a watercolour. And that's one of the joys of acrylics, isn't it? They're so versatile. Get some real darks happening in some of these areas. So now I've got a mixture of textures. If I zoom in on that, you'll see what I mean. I've got these areas here where they're dry textures where it's picked up the surface and these areas here where it's going deep and highlighting the lines around the stenciled areas. Uh, this is a panel and I'm using a panel because I'm going to be putting things on here that are not flexible. Um, but first of all, I'm going to use this stencil. I've got it mucky straight away. I'm, I'm such a mucky worker. And for this one, I want it quite high again. Uh, and this is a golden heavy gel. Okay, it's a heavy gel. So that's going to give me some really... It's a big stencil, this one. I love this. Um, and it's going to give me some strong shapes. In that corner. fast if I
loving this. Absolutely loving this. Just kind of clean that bit so it's those strong shapes can really sing out. This is the panel that I did the um, stenciling through with the large shapes in this area here. Uh, I've gessoed it black, um, but I'm also going to now throw some black high flow at it. I could have used red, any dark, dark blue for example, but what I'm needing to do is make this a non-absorbent surface for my next approach. The gesso is slightly absorbent. I want it non-absorbent. I'm using um, a high flow. I could use a fluid. I wouldn't recommend for what I'm doing here. I wouldn't have used a heavy body because I want I want to keep the textures that I've got with my stencil. If I painted over this with a heavy body. I would lose those because it has a texture to it. So I'm trying to give it a smooth, flat texture as possible. This has dried now, uh, and just over this area where the stenciling is, I'm going to give it some crackle paste golden crackle paste I'm smoothing it in so it's going over the stenciled area and in All the spaces in between. Now crackle paste needs a, a non-absorbent surface to work. Okay, if you put it on an absorbent surface it can't work, it, it can't contract. Crackle, crackle paste works on the basis that it dries out and contracts, it shrinks, so therefore it cracks. If it can soak in to the surface, it's not going to contract. The surface is holding it. Um, so it's not going to work. Okay? So one, you need a, a non-absorbent surface. So even though I had gesso on here, that's still slightly absorbent. I want to make sure it's going to crack as much as I can get it to. Um, uh, so I covered it with... Uh, I used a high flow. You could have used an acrylic fluid, something fairly runny that's not going to give a texture unless you want a texture but I didn't want a texture uh, and then I'm going in now with the crackle paste. I've used a dark underneath because that's going to show the cracks far more than if I had a white gesso. Okay, the, the, Those black lines, when it cracks you'll see those black lines are going to really come to the fore so a dark, non-absorbent surface is the way to go with crackle paste uh, and also it needs to be a firm surface. It, if you put it on paper or canvas, it's very fragile, it will crack off. Okay, It needs the support of a firm surface. Hopefully you can see here uh, how it has cracked. So I left this a few hours. I'm going to flood it with my one of my favourite paints, which is the golden iridescent bronze. I'm just going to let it flood over the surface. It's a, I can do this because it's an absorbent um, so I don't have to have a lot of binders in it. I can add a lot of water 
to the paint. I could have used watercolour, um, core watercolour, the golden one is great. I could have used their high flow. Uh, and so hopefully what you can see is it's, as before, it's separating. I'm going to carry on with the rest of the panel, painting it with a denser, a denser layer of this beautiful bronze paint. which works particularly beautifully over the black. And let it flood where the two areas join. So the whole board has now got um, the bronze on, much thicker here over the black, uh, and then a thin wash over the crackle paste on top of the stencil. It's still wet but it, when it dries off there will be a range of colours and tones where it's particularly not so much here but certainly here where the the bronze has uh, separated. So the mica flakes in the paint and the pathalo green are different weights uh, and so when you wet them down they disperse. Uh, this one mucky already. Uh, this one I'm going to do with the fine, fine pumice gel which again is quite a runny consistency uh, so I'm using it with a spreader. With this one you can see a little bit better where I'm going. in the edge. That's lovely, that's lovely as it is. <laughs> it's beautifully delicate. I'm going to repeat it if I can match up the pattern over this side. So I've turned it round 180. So they're not exactly the same. The pumice gel is really nice if I wanted to draw into this. If I go into this with um, compressed charcoal, you can see how that is picking up the texture of the surface. Start to look like a rubbing. How lovely. If I now go back in also with some water, the compressed charcoal becomes like an ink. I'm going back into this one with something called uh, an art graph. They come in these little packets. Uh, they're like a graphite and they are water soluble. And they come in different colours. So I can either work on the surface of that texture as I was before, or as you can see, it's picking up and dissolving the colour. Uh, this one I'm going to use absorbent ground, which is a bit like a very absorbent gesso. I'm going to use a, this 
quite runny. I'm going to use a silicon spreader, so basically I'm just painting it on. You'll see these better once I get some paint on them. <laughs> you really can't see anything at all. Hilarious. This piece had the absorbent ground. Uh, it's a little bit like a very absorbent gesso. So it's not very high. This is one of my favourite colours. This is sepia. I'm actually going to go in really dark with this. Let's not be timid, guys. The darker I go in, you can really see those lines. If I scrape off the surface, it reveals. Beautifully. Wow. Uh, for this last one, I'm going back. To, I'm going to use the heavy gel mat again, but in a different way. To, I'm using it with that last one. This is the heavy gel mat on a stencil through and I'm going to go in again with some sepia. What's happened here is the heavy gel mat is not absorbent. I'll move it up a little bit. Okay, it's not absorbent, so therefore the paper is absorbing. Uh, the high flow, this is sepia high flow, you can use any other ink, the paper is absorbing it, if I go right over the edges you can see here where the paper is absorbing it, but the stencil area with the heavy gel is not absorbing it. I could probably make it even more pronounced by putting some black in with the sepia. I'm getting a kind of two-tone thing going on. Mm. 
So uh, that's it. I've had a great time. Uh, and thank you very much for Stencil Girl inviting me. Okay. Uh, all details about the products you will find with this video. Uh, thank you and take care.